Hello guys, this is Sam. Welcome to my channel. This and I'm playing Starfield. I kind of stuttered there for a bit. Excuse me for that. Hi there! Thanks for stopping in. Feel free to look around. I 
can take care of transactions, and if you've got questions, just ask. Oh, please, take a look. Maybe I will see my items. Grindle. I think I will send this one. The Queen Ox. I have another Queen Ox. Three point two two point five. This is less accuracy. hard work, but it all pays off in the end. And I can't She's take all cute. the credit. Gerhardt, my business partner, he does so much of the work behind the scenes. If it weren't for him, I don't know where we'd be now. Oh, please, take a look. <clears throat> I have 47,000 credits now.
This place always surprises me. Remember our last conversation when you told me the artifacts made you so overwhelmed you couldn't remember a thing? Well, it got me thinking, so I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Really? I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Aja just start flooding back. Aja? Aja Mamasa. She was the youngest member of Constellation when it was founded. Only took her 15 years to reach chair. Sorry, I sometimes get so caught up in my own bubble, I forget that I wasn't the first. Well, there's no reason to be jealous. They were just, I don't know, different times. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation and took me under her wing as her protégé. Hey, so I pinched a few ideas from my old boss. <laughs> Can you blame me? At any rate, we logged quite a few discoveries together, but it was the actual journey that I cherished the most. <laughs> We catalogued unusual stellar phenomena, a few habitable worlds, and some unique life forms, but nothing SSNN would bother to report. Exactly. For me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend while listening to Aja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of cozy isolation the best way to really get to know someone. Yeah, you know, being alone in interstellar space, nothing but light years of black around you. Some people find that terrifying. I find it comfortable. It helps me bond with my shipmates. She's scary, man. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. You know, all this talk about Aja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. What I was she talking about and what is she talking now? Daily. Doesn't. No, she retired. Living on Poruma 2 now, I think. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit and I could make proper introductions. Oh, don't worry. There's no bad blood between us. The worst that might happen is you get stuck listening to two old friends catching up on old times. Yeah, you'll do. <laughs> Look, I don't expect you to be an exact copy of Aja. Your hunger for exploration, to pierce the veil and seek the unknown, it's a common bond that we share. I wouldn't have it any other way.
I won't be disappointed at all. And if it turns to be the case, uncertain things will continue to run smoothly. Anyway, that's all I had to discuss for now. Thanks for spending time listening to me. It really helps. What can I jump? It's 
so her. Captain Sam, do you require my assistance? Why am I not able to wear this? Let's try again. Oh, it's still working like that. So I think I should cross from this area to another area. Let's take off.
these struts primed. Retro's firing. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
One less sloppy rook whose mess I had to clean up. The last thing I need is another Austin rake getting cold feet. You want to leave the fleet? You pay the price. 
Not in credits, but in blood. Never apologize. Not if you want anyone in the fleet to respect you. And if they don't respect you, put a gun to their head and they'll get the message. But, all that aside, you made it. So now, you get to hear a nifty history lesson. Pencils ready? Good. This floating scrap heap you're standing on is called the Keep. Used to be an old UC military star station, and now it's the fleet's base of operations. Might look a little beat up on the outside, but we keep it together. Sure did. Right out from under their noses. Way before you or I were born, though. We've held this station for a very long time. Don't worry. Delgado will tell you all about it. <laughs> you think? And that's only part of it. I'll let Delgado fill you in on the whole story. He tells it better anyway. I can give you the short version while we walk the station. Story time? Hmm, how delightful. Anyway, I'll tell you all about the key. But it's better if I show you, too. Follow me. Captain Sale. Greetings. All right. History time. So, the key is in orbit around Suvorov. That's the very same ice ball where the United Colonies built a supermax prison they call the Lock. The UC is so clever. Supermax prison, Lock, Key. Uh, cute, huh? Hello, everyone. I'm Gail Dunnigan of SSNN, and this is the Lock Talk. the fleet needs right here. Of course, you've got to pay for it. Remember, on the key, credits are key. What the hell is this? All right, all right, hang on, Nev. Before you get pissed, I've got my hands full. Jasmine, sweetie, I'm trying to give a tour here. So you want to tell me why those damn doors are sealed? It's called a malfunction. You know, that thing I spend most of my day dealing with. Believe me, my people are on it. Have a little faith for once. Aww. And you always, Angel. This here is Jasmine. You need anything for your ship, she's got you covered. We'll hit up the depot next since these doors have given out on us. So anyway, we were talking about the luck. About a hundred years ago, Prisoners down there rioting and took over the place. After stealing some ships, they were actually able to make it up here and took over the key. About time you brought us a new blood neighbor. I was getting tired of trading with the same old faces. You're just ticked everyone's getting wise to your ridiculous prices, Alutra. Anyway, welcome to the depot room, where you'll be lucky if these blood-sucking leeches don't bleed you completely dry. Whoa, whoa. It's not our fault that people don't appreciate how much it costs to get untraceable merchandise onto the key. Neva's just finding because she thinks she lost a ton of cash selling us a shipment of gear. She should have done her homework. Yeah, sure, laugh it up. I'll remember that next time I need something from you cheapskates. Let's move on. Weapons, well, ammo, to mods, my story. whatever you After need. the liberated... Well, well. Neva's new hotshot. <laughs> I knew you'd find your way back to my little corner of the key. Everyone always does. Take a look around, genius. And don't tell me you've never laid eyes on a gun before. But just in case I need to spell it out for you, the merch I carry is known as weapons and ammunition. Get it? Hey, if you want to pour credits into my pocket, you won't hear any arguments from me. 
I carry most of the standard hardware. You know, kinetics, electromags, energy, even a few explosives. Occasionally, I stock a few smuggled items. Basically, the stuff sister doesn't want you to play with. Just don't screw me over or I'll be inclined to give you a free demo. With your head as the target. Not being intimidated by me is one thing. The fleet? <laughs> That's another. A little advice, Sadiqui? The fleet's trust can't be bought. You earn it. You bleed for the fleet, the fleet bleeds for you. Pure and simple. Anyone who says otherwise is either lying or getting ready to stab you in the back. Don't say I never did you any favors. All right, see you around. Well, meet Zuri, queen of the rare exports. If I don't have it, you don't need it. Neuro amps, blueprints. Get her up and she'll take care of you. Speaking of which, you still owe me for that last purchase, Neva. It's like five figures. Don't make me collect it the hard way. <laughs> the hard way? Oh no. Rook, protect me from Zuri's vengeance. Enough of the bullshit, Zuri. I'll pay you when I pay you. Deal with it. Got a problem with that? Take it up with the boss. Don't even try right, to rip me off. Got Bradley from I'm the train. I'll you when I see it. I'm sure you know the deal there. Try to be a bit more discerning regarding your choices. It's far more cost effective. Yeah, yeah, love you too, darling. Anyway, Shinya handles our lifeblood. The money. We call him our reckoner, but if you ask me, he's actually a pain in the ass. And Neva will slit your throat if she thinks you'll bleed creds. Go to hell, boss. Take care of our new friend here, or I'll find a way to pull the pin on that little party popper in your chest. Anyway, Shinya will get you set up in our system. I've got real work to do. Once you're done, head upstairs and I'll introduce you to the boss. Time for a proper introduction. I am Shinya Voss, the official reckoner for the Crimson Fleet. And since Neva so thoughtfully mentioned it, yes, this is a bomb embedded in my chest. And no, I'll never know the meaning of the word humble. In fact, I find Delgado's idea of a security measure to be quite empowering. That's amusing. I don't think I've heard that one before. Oh wait, yes I have. You might as well dispense with all the stupid jokes. I've been hearing them for years. Since I oversee the bulk of transactions and maintain all accounts for the fleet, I'm a prime target for information. Should our enemies capture me or I grew any semblance of a moral conscience, you might consider me the greatest threat we have. For Delgado, the bomb grants peace of mind and a certain degree of safety. It's why he's the boss. 
Of course. I'm not the first Reckoner to bear a bomb under my ribcage. But Delgado was smart enough to continue the tradition. Now, let me get you set up. A moment while I convene with the core. Thanks to advanced modifications, even Bugin would envy. I can interface directly with our mainframe and the Galbank network. This allows me to move and clean credits faster and more efficiently than any one of the North Cycle Runner. There. You're done. All you need now is Delgado's blessing, and you'll be one of us. None. Other than my chest and arm modifications, I am but a simple man. Is the interview over now? Can we get back to work? Yes! About time you shut up and listened! Thanks to our relations with contacts across the galaxy, we always have a steady stream of jobs available. I've granted you all the necessary permissions to access these listings at any time using the computers that surround the core. If Neva's chosen wisely, we certainly will. Now, I believe that covers all I have to say. So you can run along to Delgado. Take the elevator to the upper level. You should be able to find your way from there, I hope. Okay, it's almost... Now that we are all here, it's time to get down to business. The two of you are the only rooks that have made the latest cut. The rest, well, let's just say they won't be joining us ever again. Neva's willing to put her neck on the line and vouch for you, which means you've got what it takes to join the Crimson Fleet. You'd better not disappoint, or you'll find yourself answering to me personally. All right, let's get started here. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, you're in it for the long haul. No one quits. No one retires. The only way out is death. You stay loyal or you pay the consequences. Fleet before friends. Fleet before family. Fleet before yourself. Getting it already. I like that. Can we get on with this? I want to get drunk at the last Nova. I am impressed. That is the first intelligent thing you have said this entire time, Mattis. Since you two seem so eager to move forward, let's get to your next job. Pack your cold weather gear, Rooks. Where we are going, you're going to need it. Oh, God, don't tell me you're dragging him down to Suvaral for another one of your little initiation runs. Ten Johns to the surface, twelve dead rooks. You'd think by now you would have given up on that goddamn campfire story. Crix's legacy is no story, neighbor. We've got fresh eyes in the fleet, and if these two want to impress, they're going to help me search those woods. I hope you're right, Dale. That new code we grabbed for the lot cost us a ton of credits. And a decent captain. This initiation, as Neva calls it, is your chance to see where it all began. On Suvorov with Jasper Briggs. Briggs led the riots that gave birth to the Crimson Fleet. And if his legacy is still out there, we're going to be the ones to find him. Of course. Where else could I find such a perfect location to weed out any rooks who'd be wasting the fleet's time?
Through a bit of luck and a hell of a lot of cash, Neva was able to get her hands on an access code to the inside of the lock. This will be the first time someone from the Grinson fleet has set foot in there for, well, since Crix left the place behind. It has been frustrating being this close to potential clues, but not being able to find a way through those prison walls. What? Were you expecting a goddamn graduation ceremony? Think I'm just going to slap a skull on you and send you on your way? Make no mistake. You are being tested all the time. Every job you take will be under constant scrutiny. And neighbor? Oh, she's just waiting for you to screw things up. Well, it's more than an hour now. Before Crix left the fleet, he left a message talking about a major score. One that would set up the fleet to be a big player in the settled systems. Somewhere down the line, they started calling it Crix's Legacy. And everyone who's tried to find it has wound up empty-handed, missing, or dead. If we're gonna beat those odds, we'll first need a lead. And I would wager we will find one on Subarov. Dale's leaving out the best part. That this whole search is based on a handful of words on a very old sling. Crick's left a lot of big talk on that recording, and not a lot of facts. Some of us believe in it more than others. <laughs> Don't listen to her. When we get our hands on Crick's legacy, the fleet will be operating at a completely different level. We will become more than a match for UCC's death. Exactly. Now you're beginning to understand. Okay, enough discussion. We have got a lot of work to do. To that end, the next stop is the lock. I've had Jazz feed the coordinates into your ship's computer. Since Mathis doesn't have a ship, he's going to ride with me. I'll see you down there, Rook. Don't keep me waiting. We have to wait for him. Because... I'm listening. Start the next so one. Here I am. Um, you see security on my tail. My grab drive just choked. It's tomorrow. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more and don't forget to subscribe. No, this is Ekta Fangra. I'll be back with more exciting video of RDR2. Until then, stay tuned and have a good day, guys. Bye.